Uh, hello, um, I'm Ben Saylor. I'm a master's student at SF State, and uh, my advisors are Anangal uh, Kolkarni, Ilmi Yoon, and we work a lot with um, uh, Neo Martinez at the University of Arizona. And um, so just by way of introduction, um, we're, we're looking at uh, human-computer interactions, uh, such as gamification is our specific application here. And uh, we believe these can aid understanding of ecological sustainability. For example, in helping to parameterize um, these complex, dynamic, um, nonlinear ecological models. And uh, an example of, of one of these kinds of models is the allometric trophic network, or uh, ATN model. <coughs> allometric uh, trophic network models, they describe the flow of biomass or energy through food webs. Um, and a key aspect is they, they use uh, metabolic rates uh, estimated by body size. And these models calculate changes in species biomass as gains due to photosynthesis and feeding, and losses due to metabolism and being consumed. And the, uh, they consist of systems of differential equations that have numerous uh, species level and link level parameters. So these parameters form a very large parameter space, which uh, poses challenges in parametering, parameterizing models so that they can dynamically sustain many species in, the, in a simulated ecosystem, and so that they can accurately predict organismal abundance in nature. The figure on the upper right is, a, is an example of a food web, which can be thought of as a directed graph with uh, edges going from prey to predators. And in the lower right is an example of um, some output data from an ATN model simulation which is a set of biomass time series for each of these species. So to get to the gamification part of it, um, there is an o overarching uh, gamification project at SF State, um, headed up by Ilmi Yoon. It's called the World of Balance, and um, it's kind of an ecosystem nurturing game originally, based on the well-studied Serengeti. And uh, it now uh, consists of um, a set of mini games developed by students at SF State. And one of these mini games is called Convergence. And the goal of this game is essentially to, it's essentially a model fitting game where the player controls uh, the parameters that produce the graph on the left using an ATN model in an attempt to match as closely as possible the graph on the right. In the new version of this game that we're developing, uh, two players will compete for the best match and will place, um, place bets on whether their set of parameters will better match the target graph. So the general problem that, that we're working with is this. Even small food webs, due to the, the number of parameters, especially the number of link parameters, uh, have a large parameter space. And the network of independencies between species means a small change to one species parameter um, impacts the dynamics of all species. Um, so finding parameter values to match the target data, to match the target graph, is a non-trivial problem. And so what we're trying to do is develop an intuitive understanding of ecological dynamics and sustainability <coughs> by supporting players discovering parameter values that replicate that target ecosystem. And we're looking at this both from an educational perspective and a research perspective. You know, we want this, the players to learn something, um, and we want to uh, gain some insight, perhaps, from the, the human intuition aspect. So currently, we're, we're working with this methodology to, um, to generate some improved uh, target biomass data to use um, for this new multiplayer convergence game, and to identify promising ranges, ranges of the parameter space, uh, or rather ranges of the individual parameters that will display to the players as hints, for example, on the sliders that control the parameters. So first of all, um, the full food web of the Serengeti species um, 
that we have in the, in the overall world of balance game is 87 species. That would be a lot of sliders to tweak. And so we try to keep it manageable by um, deriving smaller food webs. And so what we're doing is using a, a, a graph sampling algorithm that um, generates subgraphs with these properties. They have one connected component. They contain all observed trophic links between species, that is predator-prey links. Uh, they have a specified number of plant species. They have no incomplete food chains. That means every species has a path down to the bottom to a plant. Otherwise, it would starve. Um, and it minimizes the plant eaters lacking predators, which we find increases uh, stability. So currently, we are exploring the parameter space using uh, thousands of simulations. Uh, for each set of 1,000 or so simulations, we generate random variations on the default parameter values that have, that have been either measured or uh, derived from established models of metabolic rates. Uh, we simply draw random values in a uniform distribution around these default values and uh, run a bunch of simulations. And so for each food web, we have um, a bunch of training data that we then use as a training set for machine learning. And uh, what we're using for the machine learning part of it is um, a decision tree classifier. The input attributes are the model parameters, such as the metabolic rates, the growth rates, and so on, of each species. And we train the classifier to recognize a healthy ecosystem versus an unhealthy ecosystem based on these parameter values. And what we're using as a measure of ecosystem health now is, is simply a measure of the trend of the game score. Um, which is, uh, we're calling the environment score. And it's essentially a measure of the total biomass in the ecosystem weighted toward higher trophic levels to give um, top predators more weight, which um, is based on the fact that top predators tend to be indicators for a good, uh, healthy ecosystem. So based on this measure, we label simulations as good or healthy or bad or unhealthy and then train a decision tree to distinguish between the two. Then based on the structure of these uh, decision trees, we're able to um, look at ranges of parameter values that are promising. So a decision tree defines a, among other things, a set of values on which um, the different input attributes can can um, split observations so that they maximally separate one class from the other. And so this gives us a, a set of ranges within which we can count, um, count the simulations and then calculate a score based on the number of good simulations within the range and the number of bad simulations in the range. And we just do this as a, in a probabilistic way. Um, probability of a good simulation minus the probability of a bad si simulation. And so on the right here, you can see um, the score is calculated for these different ranges for two different parameters. And the, the green boxes are the promising parameter ranges. And these are the ones that we would display to the players. And what we will do with, with these uh, parameter, these uh, food webs and these parameter ranges is uh, in our user study, which we have planned for the fall, we'll compare two groups of um, players of this game. The first group will be given these hints, these parameter ranges. The second group will not be given the hints. And we'll just compare how quickly and accurately the two groups are able to find a match uh, to the target ecosystem data. <coughs> Um, so just to, to sum up, um, ATN models have a, a large parameter space due to the, um, all the, the parameters, all the species, all the uh, parameters for the links between the species. 
And uh, we believe that uh, gamification supported by machine learning can provide uh, insights to help us uh, parameterize these models. And what we're doing is developing a foundation for testing various hypotheses about guiding players using information about the parameter space that we've derived from machine learning and uh, hope to gain insights um, for both education and uh, research. And uh, that's it. <laughs>yeah that's a little further than we're going with this particular project um i am beginning to look at how network structure affects um, viability and stability of food webs but um yeah that's an important an, an important aspect you know what effects species removal has and that has been researched a bit using this model great question um okay